When we're in a car and someone's using their phone to transmit to the internet, how does that affect everyone else? For example, if someone is streaming music or texting or watching a video from the back seat while you're in the front seat. Okay, that's, that's a really good question. And actually there's a lot of science and scientists have, engineers have modeled what's the radiation in a car. Um, it does get complicated because it depends on how far you are away from, a ten, from an antenna, but I'll, I, we do know these things. We know that when you're traveling in a car, the phone or whatever wireless devices you have are going to peak as you move from each cell tower that it's, is servicing it. You also have a metal structure and the radiation can reflect and bounce and move around in ways that we can't even anticipate inside a moving car, which can make it more radiation that you, than you're experiencing. And studies that have been done looking at one person using a phone and then the other passengers have found that indeed the other passengers are getting increased levels from that phone that one person is using, not the bystander. And that's why the American Academy of Pediatrics has recommended not to use, to turn the phones off to reduce exposure to radio frequency radiation in cars for families. And it's a, an important step. Now if you're streaming, that's even more radiation because the more you're doing on your phone, the more it's communicating with the cell tower and the more radiation your body will absorb from its emissions, be it a, a laptop or a tablet. Anytime anything is wirelessly connecting, there's radio frequency radiation moving through the air from the device to the base station, be, be it or a cell tower or a whale Wi-Fi router. So streaming, uh, watching movies is, and large files are going to be more radiation than if you were just texting. And I don't mean to say just texting because actually the way people are texting, they're texting <laughs> pictures and they're texting hundreds of texts a day, some kids, that doesn't mean that that's safe either, but prefer texting to voice and to movies. And FaceTiming, people FaceTime is this wonderful thing. You can talk to your loved one who, you know, I at one point had my grandfather, this wasn't through FaceTime, but we were on the computer and he talked to his cousin he hadn't seen in 20 years in Italy. How amazing is that? Um, so do it on a hardwired computer rather than on your phone. And think about, we, we have to start to think about what we're doing. Because we're not aware. But now that you're aware, you can take steps to reduce exposure. For parents of, of teenagers and, and even young children who are constantly texting their friends in a social way or Snapchatting or whatever it may be, um, almost to tell them not to do this or take the phones out of their hands is, is practically socially unacceptable these days. How do we deal with that as parents and ultimately as a society? This is a real challenge. And I want everyone to remember that just a mere 10 years ago, we were not in this situation. That nothing, no environmental pollution has invaded every aspect of our life, every age group, so quick, so fast. And as a parent of teenagers, I can tell you, I'm not saying what I'm about to say is not, I'm not making it like it's easy, but it's something that has to happen. We have to shift our consciousness and start educating people. Now, I think teenagers, some teenagers are really interested in this and, and want to protect their health. And some say, are you, what? Every, mom, everyone's on Instagram. Everyone's on Snapchat. What are you talking about? Um, so I'm going to say two things. First, and I know we know that depression is increasing. Kids are addicted to social media. Adults are addicted to to social media, and this is a it's a crisis. Radiation aside, we ha we have a crisis. But here we are, and how do how do we deal with it? Um, 
Not that I condone using social media all the time, but there is a way to use social media safely, which is through a wired connection. Of course, that doesn't address the mental health issues, but you can have it be that there's a computer that's hardwired and they can have a certain time that they're on social media. And there's a lot of education you need to do in your family starting from when they're really young. We used to say teenagers, but now we're too late. We have to go down to elementary school and really start educating pregnant women, which is something that we're doing as well. But, so that's one thing to know. Um, some parents are sending their kids off and they have a data plan and when their kids go over that data plan, the child has to pay. So that can minimize and curb and the child is, the teenager has to think about, do I really wanna send that or not? Um, we advocate that children should not be handed cell phones. Somehow it happened, I don't know how it happened, that 10, 10 years old, is the average age a child is given a cell phone. They don't know how to handle that phone mentally, and it is impacting them physically. This, everyone has it, was created by a powerful industry with with advertisements and, um, you know, buy one, get one free in every which way we're inundated. But we really have to start to take stock of what's going on and make changes and educate our kids. And I know that, you know, you can't control them, especially when they go to college. And that's why we need policy change. That's why we need to hold our government accountable on this issue. They're not addressing it at all. They're avoiding it. They are, there is no one watching the store on this issue, not the CDC, uh, not the FDA. Uh, the FCC is, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later, but we don't, the EPA was defunded in 1996 from developing a proper safety limit. So we don't even have a safety limit developed by this country, by, by scientists who understand health. So I, all I know is I feel this, this is, I personally having teenagers am struggling with how to handle this and we have to teach them just like we teach them to drive a car um, is, is something that I've been thinking about, especially when they go to college. Uh, what are they going to, you know, the kids are living and dying by their phones and dying by their phones. Um, but we have to teach them. And I think that universities actually have to be made aware of this information and they have to do something about it. And I think they have a responsibility as well. So we need our, I would call it like the grilled cheese approach to addressing this because, you know, and I, if you heat up both ends, the middle melts. So we get at the ground, we're educating our community, our friends, um, elected officials. And then at the top, we need to be advocating at the highest levels of government on this issue. Can you sue a cell phone company for getting cancer? There have been a number of brain cancer cases. There are 16 moving forward right now, actually, in the United States, where people have brain tumors that um, they believe and doctors believe are from their heavy cell phone use with the phone to the head. However, they have documentation that uh, the cell phone use was before 1996. Because in 1996, the Telecommunications Act was passed. And there were lawsuits that happened. Because one of the things it said is that you can't decide where a cell tower will go based on environmental concerns, so long as the radiation is within what the government limits are. There were a number of lawsuits after that. And um, we believe it is an a overreach of the statute but in some, in a circuit, they have determined that you can't argue health effects with this technology, um, according to that interpretation. Now, there are other circuits, and we are hopeful that there will be challenges that are successful 
to that interpretation of the Telecommunications Act. That also means that if there's a cell tower being proposed in your, in your town, your officials will say, well, we can't talk about health effects because we'll get sued. We're not allowed to talk about health effects. Um, no matter where they are in the country, even if there wasn't a legal precedent in that circuit. Um, and that's a gag order, really. It's, it's, it's like a gag order on our officials. I mean, of course we're concerned about health effects. What, what could be more important than our health? So uh, people are suing and have sued. Those cases take years, and they get dragged on and on. And um, it seems to me that it is against our constitutional rights that we can't argue our health or for protecting the environment, even at levels that are, low, are within government limits. The government has limits on how much cell towers can give off or how much can be in the air around cell towers, and also how much can be absorbed into your body from the phone. So phones are tested at a distance from your body. I mean, a lot of people will take a cell phone and they'll put it in their pocket. Or now, and you can just go on YouTube and see people taking phones and attaching them to their forehead. Well, there, there's, a, there's this video of this, this woman changing the baby's diaper with this great new hack. She's got a video streaming and it's attached to her head. So there's no ear in between. Um, some women or men will put the phone here and go like that, right? And the phone isn't even necessarily near the ear. It's kind of like in the back or some people will put it, press it against their head in the hijab. Women will put the, f the phone in their bra to carry it around. I mean, it's a very handy place when you don't want to carry your purse. But those positions are not how phones are tested. And in fact, when they are tested in that position, they exceed government limits. And this has been shown by the France. The French government tested hundreds of cell phones. And all the test results, which by the way, it took public pressure and uh, a physician, Dr. Marcarazzi, went to court to get them to release this information. Uh, he didn't win the court case, but because of the public pressure, they ended up releasing all this documentation showing at body contact and body contact positions, phones exceed government limits. But the kicker is that <laughs> if you take the way Europe tests phones, this is a little, little technical, and you can go online to read more about it, but if you convert it to how the United States tests phones, in the United States, they would exceed up to nine times more. And so a lot of times when people use cell phones, I don't know, you'll see them, they'll, they won't necessarily hold it to their ear. And here's a crazy thing, our government has made the ear to allow more radiation in it than the head um, <laughs> and making it be an extremity like a hand or a foot allowing the most radiation into the ear. They did that so they could increase how much radiation the phones can give off to do more applications. But some people put the phone like this, you know, they, they're not even pressing it using the ear. And children have littler ears and they're smaller, they have thinner skulls, and the radiation penetrates and is more deeply absorbed and at higher intensities comparatively, proportionately to adults. And you'll see kids, kids handed phones as toys and they're resting it right on their abdomen. Sometimes when, when I was a, mom, um, a, a young mother, I would hold the, have the baby on my uh, carrier and the phone right on the back of the baby because that was, there was a pocket there and that's where I kept my phone. So, and I, I didn't know. Why wasn't I informed?